the letter. We read Romans 15 verse 14 to 21. The minister stands excitedly fidgeting in front of uh, the congregation who are, in his view, arriving far too slowly for the gathering this morning. What's wrong with him today? One fellow nudges his mate. I don't know. Never seen him this excited. Looks like he's got a letter with him. Hurry up now, urges the minister from before, uh, to the latecomers. With great importance, he clears his throat as he finally takes his place before the congregation. <clears throat> um, this morning, I hold in my hands a very important letter from a very important person. He tries to say it as solemnly as possible, but his voice occasionally breaks with pure emotion, for this letter is truly burning in his hands. Uh, it's a letter from none other than Paul. The congregation audibly gasps, and a murmur ripples through the room. Paul, who? One chap asked, do we know him? Yes, man, he's that great missionary, a man responded from the back of the room. It was a very, very long church service that day, and with mouths agape in wonder, the congregation listened, drinking in every word from the great missionary Paul. Several times the minister had to restore order at Paul's remarks struck sensitive chords, and someone would protest. But deep down everyone knew that he was right. Paul's message cut deeply into the congregation, and as the conclusion of the letter finally approached, every member knew they had received nourishment for their souls that day. Could this be how Paul's letter to the Romans was experienced that very first time it was read, that day when the seal was broken for the first time? It is an exceptionally long letter, and what makes it even more remarkable is its unusually long conclusion with an extensive list of greetings. Most of the people present that morning um, never, had never even met Paul, and some likely had never even heard of him. And here, this man comes speaking very directly to them. Some people must have felt that this stranger was rather arrogant to speak to them in such a straightforward manner and, as it were, give them a dressing down. That's probably one of the reasons why Paul writes such a lengthy conclusion to his letter and casually mentions a bit about himself. He begins by returning to the theme with which he started the letter, the grace of God, the grace that called him as an apostle. The same grace also gives him the boldness to write this very direct letter to a bunch of people who don't even know him personally. With this, Paul also tells us today that if we are called by God to perform a specific task, we should approach it with full confidence. I've said a few very arrogant things to you myself, even though we don't know each other at all. Indeed, some people hold it against me for this. Sometimes they say it to me directly, but most readers look past me and rather see the true author, the Holy Spirit. Although Paul was very directly in this letter, he was also very tactful and careful not to offend anyone. 
Notice how Paul's psychology works. Oh, I know that you possess a comprehensive knowledge. He's actually flattering them a bit so that they feel good and see the things he says as a few additional points. If someone tries to force their ideology on me, I close up like a clam. But if they make me feel as though I already know the things they're saying, then I'm receptive to it. With this kind of uh, humility, Paul convinces his readers to accept and live out the things that he writes. However, humility doesn't mean that you disappear into the background. Paul proudly takes about his service, talks about his service he, he performs. There is, however, a very important condition. He is proud in Jesus Christ of his service. He is all too aware that without Jesus he can do nothing. In the same way, I am very proud of these devotionals that I've been uh, uh, sending out worldwide for the past 24 years. I tell everyone who will listen about them, hoping that they too will subscribe and spread them even further. At the same time, I'm all too aware of the fact that I couldn't have written a single one of them from my own strength and knowledge, and that the Holy Spirit is the true author. Can you rightfully say that you are proud of the kingdom work that you do? To be able to say this, two elements must be involved. You must know that you faithfully give your all to the cause and properly put your shoulder to the wheel. The other very important element is that you must be fully aware that it's not about you, but always about Jesus Christ, and that you can only do it successfully through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord, please keep me humble and on my knees, but also faithful and proud of my kingdom work. Amen.